Welcome to week four. Last week we learned all about light and how it works. Well, this week it's all about sound. And you may be surprised how similar light and sound work. But before we reflect on those similarities, let me remind everyone about our weekly contest. Just like last week, I will once again randomly place a series of letters in the upper right hand corner. Each letter will remain on the screen for five seconds. Write all the letters down, put them in the correct order, and be the first five people to email me the correct answer, and you will win a crazy prize. This week's word will be six letters. Thanks to everyone who participated last week and found out that our word was Earth. Let's look at the agenda for this week. Number one, complete the sound module. Use the link from the description or the Google Classroom to be redirected to the module. Number two, complete the outdoor scavenger hunt. And number three, complete the water glass pitch lab, which I will be demonstrating today. With that being said, let's get into the rhythm and talk about sound. Our goals for this week are to discover and demonstrate how sound is a form of energy that moves in a predictable way. Also, how the way sound travels in different ways depending on the medium. What you have been hearing is my voice, and that would be a type of sound. But in order for you to actually hear this sound, it has to be carried through a medium, like this drum. You're probably asking yourself, how is sound being carried in this case? I want you to think about what is all around you. Air. Sound travels through the air. Well, that's great, but you're probably asking yourself, what is sound? Sound is a form of energy made by vibrations. When an object vibrates, like this drum, the air particles vibrate. Particles. Hey, isn't that like what light uses? Particles? Yes, small particles in the air move back and forth, which creates sound. So really, you aren't hearing sound as much as you are feeling it. Inside this drum, there is air. When I hit the drum, the air particles vibrate, move back and forth, which creates sound waves. These sound waves travel in the air into our inner ears. If you look inside the drum, you will see these small dots of paper. Let's pretend those are really big particles of air. When I strike the drum, it will cause the air to vibrate, which creates the sound waves we hear. The pieces of paper move around simulating the air particles moving when struck. The harder I strike the drum, the more the particles, the dots of paper, move. In this case, the drum helps trap the sound waves and forces it to go in a specific direction. I want you to think back to your principles of light, where it was reflected, was absorbed, or was somehow altered. The same is true for sound, when sound travels in waves and hits a solid surface. Since sound is energy, the more sound waves moving through the air, the stronger the vibration. This is what we call volume how loud or soft a sound is. Right now, I want you to think about talking to your friends in class using a three inch voice. Repeat after me, Steve, what would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? That would be using a soft voice. However, think about saying that to your friend on the other side of the playground. Repeat after me, Steve, what would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Notice how much more energy you had to use just like hitting the drum harder. The more energy being used, the louder the sound will be. The less energy being used means softer sounds, hence softer airwaves. However, what happens when you have the same volume but change the pace or beats? Or in our case, vibrations. That is our next topic, pitch. You will notice these four identical empty jars. You can do this at home right now using four glasses that are all the same size. I'm going to fill each jar with a different amount of water. The first one will be nearly filled. The second will be around 75%. The third will be 50%. And our last one will have around 25% water. Now I'm going to add a couple drops of food coloring to see if I can make the water, wait for it, more translucent instead of transparent. And you thought you were going to get rid of those words, ha! Ah! The color is just so we can see it easier. Anyway, using a simple spoon, listen as I hit each jar. What did you notice? As I went down the line, the sound changed. 
It didn't get louder or softer because I used the same amount of energy. Instead, the pitch changed, how high or low it sounded. How high or low it sounded. Why do you think that is? The amount of water in each jar is different. Remember, sound is vibrations, which is movement back and forth. When the red jar is struck, the vibrations are slower because there's a lot more water, so it creates that low sound. When it comes to the blue jar being struck, it makes a really high sound because there is less water to move, so the vibrations go faster. Think of it like running outside. In the summer, you can run really fast because there isn't anything preventing you from moving your legs quicker. However, when you run in the winter with lots of snow on the ground, you slow down because it's harder to move through all of that snow. Now that brings us to our last concept for today when it comes to sound, known as frequency. Frequency is telling how fast or slow a sound is. Frequency is considered the number of sound waves that pass through a particular point in one second. Although we don't think we can see sound, we can actually use what we learned last week to see sound. I have set up a special demonstration from last week that uses our principles of light to help us see sound. I'm going to start with a simple speaker and balloon. First, I have to remove the speaker from the box and wrap the balloon around it. Then, I'm going to put the speaker back inside of the box. Next, we're going to use a fragment of a mirror along with our laser light from last week. I'm going to attach the fragment of mirror onto the balloon covered speaker. Then, we're going to use our laser holder. This laser is going to be projected onto the mirror, which is then going to be reflected onto the wall. As the speaker starts playing music and begins to vibrate, it's going to start vibrating the mirror. You will see the light going up and down to make a wave. This is called oscillating. Notice as the speaker vibrates, makes sound, it vibrates the mirror and causes the reflected light to move and make waves. Now here's the really cool part. Listen and watch closely. When the song has a slower sound wave, a lower one, Notice how much wider the shape is. That's because just like the red jar of water, it takes longer for the sound to travel, so the waves are wider. However, when the vibration is faster, the sound is higher, the shapes are more narrow. These speeds of the shapes are demonstrating how high or low a sound is, which is called frequency. A frequency is one cycle of the vibration waves, and a frequency is measured using something special called a hertz. The lower amount of hertz, the deeper or lower the sound is. Just like the homemade laser speaker oscilloscope, the higher amount of hertz, the higher and faster the sound is. So those really wide shapes must be something around 250 hertz. The really narrow and faster shapes might be around 8,000 hertz. Those hertz means how many sound waves per second. So that wide and low shape makes around 250 waves per second. Those narrow and high shapes make around 8,000 waves per second. However, there are certain levels of frequencies that we can't hear because they're so fast. I know you are familiar with cats and dogs being able to hear some sounds that humans simply cannot. That's because they can hear sounds up to 40,000 hertz, whereas the human ear can only hear up to 20,000 hertz. So when Mr. Sparkles or Little Fluffinator starts acting strange, it may hear something you don't, and you might want to take it seriously. Alright, let's review what we have learned today. Going back to our goals for this week, we've discovered and demonstrated how sound is a form of energy that moves in a predictable way. We have also noticed that sound travels in different ways depending on the medium, just like we did with the jars of water and our homemade oscilloscope. Alright gang, that's it for this week. As a final reminder, for your activity this week, make sure you complete the water glass activity I showed you this week 
for your assignment. Please record yourself doing it and upload it to the Google Classroom so we can all hear and see what you're doing. Make sure to join our daily class meetings Monday through Friday. Until then, be safe and I look forward to hearing from you very soon.